21.3 and 21.4 first impressions. Now this video has a few goals. First one, try to give you a strategy for this workout that I just finished. And the second is in case I don't make it till the end of the video, this could be like, like the last statement for my family. So make sure they see this. But joking aside, it's very hard. It's, it's harder than I thought it was going to be. And uh, the reason could also be that I haven't trained CrossFit as much as I used to, so now, so this one like hit me a little bit harder than it should have, but I actually think it's a, it's a very hard workout and it's definitely uh, the separator from the people that are gonna make it to the next stage and the one who won't. So as we go into this workout, uh, we need to first understand where we are. Are we doing the, the open for the first time or for one of the first time and we just wanna have fun? Are we doing the open trying to give a shot to make it to the next round or do we want to go to the games or actually really compete because according to where you fall in this category then of course your strategy is going to play uh, a lot differently throughout the workout so starting with people that this is your first open or one of your first open and you just want to have fun so if that is your goal you're not efficient on muscle up or you've never had a muscle up probably your best strategy is try to push through the first two rounds and try to get a good tie break and whatever is left in the time you're just gonna go for and attempt as many as muscle up as you can or try to achieve your first one going as hard as you can doesn't mean that you have to start your first 15 squats thinking that that's the whole workout it means try to go to a speed that you can maintain for seven eight nine minutes because still you want to make it through right you don't want to uh, push too much front squat and then having to break the toaster bar every one repetition so it's always important to find a pace and stick to it. Now, I know we've all seen the, um, the announcement with, uh, with Scott Panchik and all the other and the brothers, and they make it look like this is just like an air squat and sit-ups workout, but it's not the case. So be smart to break it up. You might also want to consider breaking the front squat and breaking the thrusters just so you can still continue moving through the workout. You don't want to find yourself with your hands on your knees and waiting minutes before you can move on to the next movement. Um, moving up, I can say right now you're a little bit competitive, you wanna try to make it to the next round, so now the separator for you is going to be the bar muscle up. Now, what you wanna try to make sure is that you arrive to the muscle up still fairly fresh. It makes no sense for you to sprint the first two rounds and then arrive on the muscle up and take eight, nine minutes to complete the muscle up or six minutes or seven, just cause you wanted to complete the first two rounds in five minutes and then take you like seven, eight minutes just for the last one. Your best strategy here is probably break like the gymnastic movement in two to three sets. It could be uh, 12, 10, eight splits. It could be like 10, 10, 10, like whatever works better in your head. I always try to make sure my first set is a little bit bigger than the other one, just because mentally give me a little bit of an advantage. But you still want to make sure that you break those up. Don't go unbroken. I know you're good at toast to bar. I know you can link many, many reps but you have a lot of work to do after that. So even if you're comfortable on toaster bar, please consider breaking it a little bit sooner. Each round, like the first two rounds, they might take you 10 seconds more than they would take if you would go unbroken, but you're going to arrive at the end on a muscle up and you're going to be still able to perform. Now, when you go to a muscle up, it's a whole different game. It's a lot harder because by the time you get there, your heart rate is up, everything is a little bit tired, your grip is tired, so even then, you're probably better off going three, four reps at a time with small breaks in between, then try to attempt the first set of 10, and then have it to rest 45 seconds, and then go again. Like the, the rest between the three workouts is very short. It's a minute, it just fly by. But the second you wash your hands, like you, you dry your hands, you get some water, time is up. So you don't really recover much, unless you've been practicing, like get your heart rate down very fast, but you don't recover as much. So you don't, you don't want to do like go out too hard in the first few rounds because you don't have enough time to recover after that. And it's same on the muscle up. You don't want to go out too hard on the muscle because you're not going to have enough time to recover, but you're going to have to waste a lot of time before you actually jump back on the bar. So my suggestion is break it earlier than you think. The muscle up are going to start to hit after you pass 15, 18 reps. That's when you're going to start to feel them a lot. So if the first five reps feels good, that's just great news, but don't take advantage trying to link another five and then destroy all the good things that you've done up until that point. Now, the last stage is for those who actually want to compete. And here it's just like, you need to hang in there, mate. Like you have to go hard. Now you probably want to break maximum once on the, on the gymnastic portion and you definitely don't want to break the bar, but you have to go if your goal is compete, if your goal is to make it through the next round and make it to a good position and put a little bit of a statement and actually test 
where your fitness is at, this is a great workout to test if you're actually fit for CrossFit or if you're not. So this is one of the workouts that you kind of have to push it a little bit and risk it a little bit because then you're still probably gonna make it to the next phase, but you have a good picture like, hey, I probably need to work on these few things if I actually wanna pass also the next stage because here we're going to see like a big separator in between the top athletes and the good athletes. So if you find yourself in a good category because something went wrong in the workout, you were not ready enough or fit enough for this, you probably, like this workout's going to be a wake up call on things that you will need to work on uh, later on through the season. Um, moving on to the barbell part now. Barbell is going to be the same for everybody. Sorry, I have construction in the house. So barbell is going to be the same for Sorry, I had construction going on in the house. But on the barbell, if you can hit 80% of your clean and jerk, it's a very good day. Uh, you're going to arrive here, of course, tired. Of course, with your heart rate up, you're not gonna do more than your one max clean and jerk. You're not gonna do your one max clean and jerk. You have to be smart and not let your ego decide what you're going to lift, but actually have a strategy. So I think a good plan for you would be, you finish your thruster, take a minute and a half to just breathe. Walk, breathe, do your thing. You have seven minutes, you don't wanna hit seven lifts. You wanna do like a two, three prep lift. The lift, the weight that you must hit, and then eventually one weight that you would love to hit. But that's your strategy, it's like two, three warm up hits, just a few clean and jerk, and then you go into the weight that you wanna move. So my suggested strategy would be, if you finish your thrusters, you wait one and a half minutes, then you're gonna put some weight on the bar, probably something around like your 60% clean and jerk, do a single clean and jerk or a hand clean and jerk, whatever you feel you need the most to get ready for. If you're going to squat the, the last reps, I would suggest to start warming up the squats with a little bit heavier weights. I know you've done legs, but probably still good for your body to adjust gradually to the weight you're going to lift. So you wanna have two to three prepping lifts where you're gonna do a clean and jerk or a hand clean and jerk, and that's it. You don't need to do the whole complex, okay? And then, you're going to arrive before the workout, you should decide like, hey, this is the minimum weight I need to hit today. And it has to be based on a strategy, not on your ego. It's like, hey, this is my 75, 77, 80, 81%, one rep max clean and jerk. This is my must hit weight. So you want to hit that weight when you have like maybe two minutes left on the clock. You want to do the whole complex and that is your must hit. You can't miss that weight. That's what you need to hit. So make sure you strategize it beforehand because when you arrive on the barbell and you're tired, you're not very brilliant, your brain is foggy, you're not gonna strategize when you're already destroyed. You have to strategize before so that when you get onto the bar, you have your must hit weight. After that, you can have like a second lift. So if that must hit weight went fine, you still have a two minutes window to hit the my, my, I wish I can hit that weight or I really want to hit that weight, but that would be just an extra. So you've done your job by now and that's you're going to be your extra, the one eventually is going to separate you. So have that in mind and it could be like, you know, just a 2.5, 5% more than what you just hit. So if you hit your 80, try to go, you hit your 85. Don't go up like 10% more because that's not going to be the best strategy for you. Smaller tips. Try to have like smaller plates on the bar. Everyone's gonna go for like, you know, 100, 105, 110, 120, 130. If you have fraction plates, that might separate you a little bit more from, from the other athletes. Uh, of course, if you do like 85.5 kilos, someone else do 140, that's probably not that much of a difference, but maybe along the people that are lifting your weight, uh, that kind of maybe place you like, you know, a few, a few positions up. So yeah, have a strategy before you go in there. Understand in which category you fall, you're having fun in the open, you're fairly competitive or you're competitive, and then have a strategy when you go into the lifting. Everyone, you know, everyone's gonna work on different ways, but everyone has to have like kind of the same, uh, the same stress, the same effort on the barbell. So that's my, my tip for the workout. Go hard, have fun. For some of you, this is going to be the last workout of the open. And uh, so yeah, just to make the most out of it, have fun, go hard and uh, crush it.